Let's get one thing clear here. Weather just means the state of the atmosphere at a given place and time. But what you probably want to know is why does Earth have the specific weather it has? The wind, the lightning, the storms, the clouds, tornadoes, fronts. Why these specific phenomena and what are the root causes? Weather is a result of the unequal distribution of energy throughout our atmosphere. All the atmosphere wants to do is just be at equilibrium. So why isn't it? It can't be that hard, right? The sun is by far the largest energy source for our planet, and besides the occasional lunar eclipse, it's not like extraterrestrial bodies are just blocking the sun from shining on half the Earth at any given time. The answer involves what happens when the sun's radiation reaches the surface of the Earth. The warmer land then transfers that heat into the lower atmosphere, causing that air to rise. So now we have warmer air over the land and cooler air over the water. What's also something that happens when you expose water to sunlight or any energy for that matter? Evaporation. When that water vapor rises high enough into the atmosphere, it condenses back into little water droplets and becomes a cloud. Clouds block solar radiation from reaching the ground, which leads to cooler temperatures beneath the cloud. We already have a system where the unequal temperature differences between land and water, coupled with the water cycle, creates more temperature differences itself. But wait, there's more. The angle at which the sun hits the surface of the Earth determines how much solar radiation the surface receives. So if the sun is perpendicular to the equator, the maximum amount of solar radiation will hit the equator, causing the highest surface temperatures at the equator. The further north or south you go, the smaller that angle becomes, the less radiation received, the lower the temperature. These large-scale temperature differences create pressure differences, where there is warm air at a higher pressure near the equator and colder air at a lower pressure near the poles. There is a force called the pressure gradient force that tries to distribute the warm air towards the poles so that the temperatures everywhere can be the same. However, the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, which actually creates the Coriolis force, which actually pulls the air back towards the equator. So now you have these two forces that are just fighting for balance. You have this temperature difference that is just trying to equalize, and on top of all this, the Earth is tilted. So now in January, it's colder in the northern hemisphere, and in July, it's colder in the southern hemisphere. As you continue to go deeper and deeper, these systems get more and more complicated. On a smaller scale, most changes in weather that we experience week to week are the result of temperature differences across small areas. In particular, when you have warm and cold air masses that move close together, a lot of weather systems will spin up at that temperature boundary. But you have to take a second to appreciate the rarity of the weather system we have on Earth in the grand scheme of the universe. The chemical makeup and temperature profile of our atmosphere, the amount of water and land we have at the surface, the distance from the sun, the tilt of our axis, the speed of the Earth's rotation, all these factors just lining up to create an amazing world of weather. Which brings up the question, do other planets experience weather? Yes, but a different type of weather than we experience on our own planet. For example, the thin atmosphere on Mars coupled with the large temperature difference between day and night can cause solar dust storms that envelop parts of the planet's surface as well as the occasional dust devil. Saturn's moon Titan has an axis and experiences seasons much like Earth. Because it's so far from the sun, instead of a water cycle, it has a methane cycle, where methane evaporates in the summer and falls as liquid methane in the winter, pulling into lakes near the poles. I plan on doing a video about weather on other planets in our solar system, as well as smaller scale systems that we deal with day to day here on Earth. Be sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss future Weatherbox Wednesdays, and I will see you next Wednesday.